Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to That's Right, I Said It, where I am proving everyone's conceptions or preconceptions about a drug addict wrong. Proving every day on this channel that there are levels to drug addiction. And there are the rock bottom levels that you see on television or that you see on the streets, the homeless person or the person passed out in a hotel room where they're just completely hit rock bottom with, in their lives and in their drug addiction. There is that. But much more often, there's me. And there's other people that you walk by on a daily basis that on the outside appear to have it all together. And do not seem to live the life of a drug addict. Do not seem to fit that persona of some homeless person on the street scratching you. Hey, man, can I get some change, man? You got, you know, sitting on the street corner, you know, getting their vein ready to shoot up. You know, that's what this channel's about. Um, there are what you call functional drug addicts out there in the world. How do I know this? Because you're looking at one right now. I have struggled with substance abuse specifically uh, to narcotics, but not only narcotics. Um, I'm a poly addict. I've been addicted to multiple different things, including Adderall, um, cigarettes, marijuana. Um, I've, you know, obviously I've, I've dabbled in various kinds of narcotics. Um, and this has been since I was just a young man. Um, and It has become clear that there is a need for this. There is a need for this sort of platform where people who are suffering in silence with some sort of drug addiction, but yet they're a professional. They're a drug addict, but yet they're a mother, father. They're a drug addict, but yet they're a sister, brother. They're a drug addict, but yet they're a prominent church member. They're a drug addict, but they're a prominent member of their community. The list just goes on and on, and, uh, and, and there is no age limit, and there is no specific social status when it comes to someone uh, having a substance abuse issue. That's why I'm here. This is a place, it's a judgment-free zone, where you can come in here, you can tell your story, or you can just listen to my story about all the fucked up things I've done in my drug addiction. And there's been quite a few, and I've already shared a lot of those. And if you subscribe to the channel, you'll hear subsequent videos where I talk about a lot of the things that I've gone through uh, as a result of drug addiction. And it's a lot of things that most people would be humi humiliated and embarrassed to talk about. And it's these are things that if you were to see me on the street or out in your community, you would look and say, man, this guy seems to have it all together. He's got a beautiful family. You know, he seems to be doing well. He's dressed nice. He's in shape. He works a good career. He's got children. He's got a, a beautiful home that he, that he lives in, sits on a lake. The guy's got a hot tub sitting on his back deck. I mean, you're not telling me this guy has an issue with drugs, right? Ah, wrong. Let go of those misconceptions. Let go of those stereotypes that Hollywood has helped to create for us regarding what a drug addict is, the way they sound, the way they look, the way they act, so forth and so on. Because I get pitch, uh, messages from people every day that um, if you saw this person out in the community, you would never think that this person would struggle with uh, with substance abuse abuse issues. But hey, you know, we're all human. And uh, this is a channel where you can talk about those things and you can divulge those things. And um, it, because, it, it, listen, it's important to talk about things. It's important to get things off of your chest, all right? If you push it down to the basement of your soul, it will find a way to come out in other negative ways in your life. You don't want that. So what do you do? You come on here, you talk about it. And believe it or not, drug addicts are some of the most wonderful, compassionate, sensitive, driven, talented people on the face of this planet. 
And um, nobody's here to judge you. You know, we're here to listen. We want to know your story, you know, and, uh, and, and what your current struggle, what your current fight is. So that we can support you in that fight. That's why we're here. So drop me a comment. Subscribe to the channel, channel if you enjoy just a guy. Not the cool edits. You know, not the cool transitions. Not some larger than life character um, sitting here, you know, like pretending like I've got it all together. But I'm, you know, going to help you along your journey with all of your struggles. No. You're listening to a guy who has his own struggles on a daily basis. And I talk about those things on here. This is real shit, man. This is real shit. This is where the rubber meets the road right here. So if you enjoy that realness about this channel, subscribe to the channel, man. We'd love to have you. So we were talking to Lula yesterday. Lula, I hope I did not say your name wrong for the whole video yesterday. I noticed that I said Lula at first, but as I progressed into the video, I started referring to you as Lola. And it may be Lula, it may be Lola. It's spelled L-U-L-A. I think that could be either way, and I'm sure you probably take it either way. But uh, anyway, I apologize for that up front. Um, we were talking about yesterday, uh, Lula's been taking Vicodin for around 15 years. Uh, she wants to come off of them. She's considering using Kratom, uh, as many others have done throughout the years. Uh, she had one little stint where she tried Kratom. She feels like she wasn't taking enough to account for the Vicodin. So we were talking about how, um, you know, one Kratom does not equal a Vicodin and how you're probably going to have to take a pretty substantial amount of Kratom, um, you know, to get rid of, uh, or negate any withdrawals that you might experience from something stronger, a stronger narcotic like Vicodin. So we were talking about those things. So I just want to recap on a couple of things we were talking about yesterday. And listen, this is not just for Lula. You know, there are people out there that are struggling with very, very similar issues right now. So you can take anything that I say today, including Lula's name, and you can put your name there or any substance that I talk about related to Lula or anybody else or myself on this channel, you can take that substance and you can replace your substance of choice there. And uh, all of these things are applicable. applicable, And that's what we talk about on this channel, just all this stuff. Okay. Um, so uh, one of the things I wanted to address, you know, when you do a video um, or when you start doing videos of things like this, a lot of well-intentioned, well-meaning people um, kind of come out of the woodwork and everyone kind of gives their two cents. And, and again, um, these are loving, compassionate people who are truly trying to help their fellow man or their fellow woman. So I'm not throwing off on anyone and everyone's opinion here is welcome. And you'll find that one thing is true about me. Your opinion is absolutely welcome as long as you express it in a respectful way. If you come on here like a troll and you start just being disrespectful to people and throwing off on people, your ass is blocked and we'll never hear from you again. I can assure you of that. But, um, you know, if you're a person who you express opinion, an opinion that I don't necessarily agree with, but you were respectful about it and it's just your opinion, then I might reference that opinion on here. Um, and I might rebuke it a little bit or, you know, give my own version of what I think the correct facts would be in any given scenario, but I'm not at all throwing off on you per se. So if, if you hear me talk about a comment that you made on here and I'm saying something a little bit different than what you said, please don't unsubscribe. Please don't take it personally. It, just like the old timers say, an opinion is like what? That's right. An asshole. Everybody's got one. I've got one. You've got one. Everyone around you has got one. So I appreciate everyone's opinion, even if it's one that I don't necessarily agree with. Um, it, I, I appreciate them all as long as they are respectful to everyone on here and everyone is treated with, you know, um, treated with respect, you know, as, as a human. So uh, one of the first things I want to talk about, um, and, and this is related to Lula, you know, we had a, a few people jump, jump on and uh, comment to Lula, um, talking about how, you know, ways that maybe she could come off of um, the Vicodin. 
and um, you know start trying our hand with kratom you know which is something this um, in most people's strong opinion you know not as detrimental not only to the body but the mind and also the uh, the the withdrawals uh, for something like kratom are not nearly as bad um, how do I know that because I've withdrawn from both that's how so I'm not just speaking off the top of my head I've done a cold turkey from Vicodin I've done a cold turkey from Percocet and I've done a cold turkey from Kratom um, and all three I was abusing at the time that I did a withdrawal uh, and I can tell you unequivocally that Kratom was not as intense or severe as was the Vicodin or the Percocet with that said uh, we had someone make a comment that said uh, Kratom withdrawal is mild to moderate mild um, and one one of the uh, one of the commenters actually they said in here um, it, here it is so one person commented and they they quoted some doctor uh, a doctor McCurdy saying that traditional kratom withdrawal tends to be mild this is the doctor supposedly saying this it's in the upper end of mild but not in the moderate and it's certainly not severe so, all right, so I, I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on this and kind of give my own take on this. And this is for Lula, but this is also for anyone else listening. All right, that comment, while it may have been true for that person or for that doctor, whoever wrote the comment, this, the withdrawals from something like Kratom is subjective, okay? And I cannot stress this enough, and this is something that I scream from the mountaintops on this channel. That statement cannot be made in an objective way because the statement itself is subjective. Depends on how much you're taking, what type of kratom you're taking, how long you've been taking it, your frequency of use, your age, even your, gen your sex male female your activity level your rate of metabolism i mean i i don't have enough i'm running out of fingers here there's all kinds of things that make a difference as to how your withdrawals might be from something like kratom all right so this person and that's pretty much all they said but they were indicating based on my video yesterday and based on what some of the other commenters were saying that uh well, you know the withdrawals from Kratom are, are not that bad. Listen, that's yes and that's no. You know, that all depends on the person, how much they've been taking, and a lot of other factors uh, that, that would determine that. And again, I was a person who, uh, I've been addicted to Percocets, I've been addicted to Vicodin, I did cold turkey withdrawals from both of those, and they were undoubtedly, for me, much more severe than was the Kratom withdrawal. But this doctor who prescribed them as mild, in the upper end of mild, but not even moderate, that's all about perspective, man. That's all about perspective. And if you have somebody who has never taken any harder sort of opiate like Oxycontin, uh, Percocet, Vicodin, heroin you know and and the, their first experience in the rodeo of or at the rodeo of narcotics is kratom and then they take kratom for two or three years pretty heavily and then come off of it to that person i bet you though if you ask them that same question i bet you that their expression would be that it was horrendous it was horrible and uh, i can tell you from experience I did a cold turkey withdrawal from Kratom, and it was tough. It was very tough. And this is years after I had done a withdrawal from, uh, a cold turkey withdrawal from Percocet, okay? Was it as bad? No, but it was not mild by any stretch. It was not upper end mild either. <laughs> and, uh, you know, granted, I was taking the extracts. I was taking the MIT-45, so my tolerance was through the roof at this point. I had been doing that regularly for about a year, year and a half at this point. But when I did that cold turkey, I did not sleep a full night 
for probably two weeks. And I am not even exaggerating when I say that. I'm not saying, oh yeah, it was crazy. I didn't sleep for two weeks. No, I mean, I literally did not shut my eyes to the point where I was sleeping for almost two weeks when I came off of the MIT 45s. And you know, the nighttime, like the restless, the hypertrophy and the constant like tensing up and the restless legs, it wasn't as bad and it wasn't as intense as like a Percocet withdrawal, but it's no fun, man. It's no freaking cakewalk. It's no walk in the park. It is very tough and depending on how mentally and physically strong you are as a person, it could put people over the edge. And I could see why some people go would have to go to rehab uh, for Kratom. And that's what, you know, Lula's response was actually that very thing. that She's heard of people having to go to rehab for Kratom. So what she was saying is, I don't know about the downplaying. You know, some people like to come on here and down. And listen, I take Kratom. I take Kratom currently. I take Kratom every day. Um, you know, a few times a day. And I'm a functional Kratom user, 100%. So I'm not speaking out against Kratom, but when I decided to do this channel, I decided that I wasn't going to take some sort of hard stance on one side of the fence. I try to be open and objective here. Objective, not subjective. And the truth is, even though I'm a Kratom user, I want people to understand and know before they get into a regular user relationship with Kratom that there are some physical withdrawals and depending on how long and how much you've been using of it, they can be pretty bad and they can be what I would consider definitely moderate. Um, the MIT 45 uh, withdrawals for me, I would almost consider moderate severe. You know, not sleeping for two weeks, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big freaking deal if you have any responsibilities in life. Agreed? And not only not sleeping, but laying there being uncomfortable all night and constantly having to move and like tense up and like hypertrophy and you can't keep your legs still for more than three or four minutes without your legs jumping, you know, so forth and so on. And again, all of this depends on how much you've been taking and for how long, how old you are, whether you're a man or a woman, your metabolism, how much water you drink, your diet. I mean, there's just a plethora of things that will affect those rate of withdrawals. But for somebody to come on here and quote a doctor who says Kratom withdrawals are mild at best. With all due respect, I have to disagree with that. And I have to say that that, that is a completely subjective um, statement. And I don't like subjective on here. I like to be objective because, you know, the, just like we have a melting pot of different people, different ethnicities in this world, we have a melting pot of different people and their tolerances to different substances. You know, there's a million different scenarios that could play out here in regards to someone's withdrawals from Kratom. You have to discover your own relationship with that. And uh, I don't want anyone in here to, to read a comment like that and say, oh, psh, you know, I'm good then. You know, and if you're good with your Kratom use and, and you're using Kratom on a regular basis, I'm not trying to scare you off. And I'm not trying to deter you from taking Kratom. There's nothing like that. Um, you know, keep doing you. Keep doing you. But for the people out there that aren't taking it or considering taking it, my personal opinion is uh, it doesn't seem to be as severe as like the harder opiates, like the Percocets, the Vicodins, and I'm sure the heroin, I don't know because I've never you know, been addicted to heroin, but um, hard pain pills I definitely have. And uh, it wasn't as bad. Again, I repeat, it wasn't as bad, but it was bad. It was bad. And for someone who's never taken any harder opiates and Kratom is their first experience, um, it's going to scare the shit out of you. You know, uh, going through withdrawals, especially withdrawals from like heavy use of something like Kratom if you go to do it cold turkey. So uh, I didn't beat that dead horse in the ground, so I'm going to move on to something else. So um, also, uh, 
Jonas made a good comment to Lula, uh, you know, just letting her know because he actually came off of Vicodin and Percocet, uh, Percocet several years back and went straight to Kratom, from what I understand, uh, which is basically what Lula's trying to do. Uh, but she's trying to determine how much to take. The first time she tried it, she wasn't taking that much, so she didn't feel like it really did any benefit to her as far as helping with the withdrawals. Um, it acts on the same opiate receptors as Vicodin and Percocet, so it should, in theory, help you if you take enough. Um, again, this is everyone's relationship with Kratom should be their own. It should be something that they discover by virtue of their own processes. And I'm no doctor, and I don't want to be encouraging anyone, hey, go take 15 grams of Kratom powder. But you may have to take 15 grams of Kratom powder if what you are wanting to do is be able to come off the Vicodin and not uh, go into some, you know, pretty serious uh, physical withdrawals, okay? And, um, but, you know, that that's going to be uh, uh, just trial and error on your part. I've talked to uh, Lula a little bit behind the scenes about ways to do this, whether it's just powder or mixing it with orange juice, you know, and shooting it down that way. There's ways to try it. Um, and uh, I, I suggest the uh, green strain. Uh, white tends to be more energetic, not quite as much euphoria. Um, red, on the opposite end of the spectrum, tends to be more euphoric and more sedative. Um, for me, white doesn't give me any euphoria. It just kind of gives me a, a stimulatory like energy sort of feel. And then red makes me sleepy to be 100% honest with you. So I like to stick right in the middle. Green gives you a little bit of both. You get some of the euphoria. You also get some of the um, energizing properties from that. So um, to me, the green feels most in line with how like a Vicodin or a Percocet or something like that would make me feel. Does that make sense? If you're coming off of something like Vicodin, um, I imagine you're probably gonna to wanna to explore maybe the green strains, um, but you're certainly welcome to try um, any of the others as well. Um, let's see what else. So we also talked about, um, Lola mentioned to me about post-acute, uh, pause, post-acute withdrawal syndrome. So this is after the week, the five to seven to 10 days where you're having physical withdrawals, where you can't sleep at night, your legs are jumping, you know, you're having cold sweats, your, you know, bowels are all messed up where you have loose stool, you know, all, low energy, all these other things. Well, th those more acute uh, withdrawals tend to go away depending on how long the person has been using and their diet when they're coming off of it, how much water they're drinking. All these things will depend on how long those acute withdrawals will last for you. But for most people, it's somewhere within like seven to 10 days, somewhere around in there. So after 10 days at tops, 13, 14 days, after, after two weeks, you should be pretty much completely past um, any of the acute physical withdrawals, like not being able to sleep, having restless legs at night, you know, your bowels and your bowel movements just start, start to kind of straighten out by then, that sort of thing. But then there's a stretch after that where people say that um, the physical aspect of it is gone. Now comes the mental. Now comes learning to live without that narcotic or without that opiate, you know, always altering your mindset and altering your mood and a lot of people have reported experiencing you know depression with that uh feeling of kind of aimlessness like where do i go in life what do i do now uh, a feeling of almost loss like i've lost my best friend this is something that i've lived with for the last five years 10 years 15 years of my life i don't know how to live without it so then you have to kind of learn new ways to live and find joy now in just regular things without that substance and um to be honest i'm gonna be completely honest i'm not the best person to talk to about that because when i came off of vicodin and percocet um back when i was in my early 30s which has been almost 15 years for me i'm a 47 year old man now um i as soon as i went off of that my doctor at that time wrote me a prescription for Vivance and then Adderall. 
as I was coming off. So before I was even finished with my acute withdrawals from Vicodin and Percocet, I was already on another mood enhancing medication, which was Adderall, right? And, you know, Adderall gives you energy, gives you focus. It's, it also has a mood lifting element to it. So to be honest with you, um, I can't really speak on that too much. You know, what happens after the physical withdrawals are over with? Now, I can talk to you about the physical withdrawals themselves a lot and uh, kind of what I did to, to make it through that. Um, you know, quitting something like Percocet, cold turkey. I can talk about those things a lot because I've been through it, um, what, three, four times now in my life. Um, so I can talk about those things, but the pause, the post-acute withdrawals after that week and a half or two weeks, once the physical uh, starts to reestablish and, and then the mental aspect takes over, I never really dealt with that. To be honest, um, I'm not saying that's a good thing or really a bad thing, but um, probably should have, you know, probably should have seen what it was like to go completely sober for a year or two or three or whatever. I just never have, to be honest. And like I said, I still to this day am taking Kratom. Um, it's the only thing I take. I don't take the Adderall anymore. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I don't. I maybe once every two or three months we'll have a drink. I'm not a drinker. Um, weed, same thing. Once in a blue moon, I'll smoke some when I'm around somebody who does. Um, I don't, and I don't take any prescriptions from a doctor. I am not on one prescription medication. I exercise, I eat super, super healthy. So I'm one of those people that I have that one bad habit. Um, it really kind of helps me with my mood and just uh, my psyche overall. But then the rest of my life around that, super, super healthy. So I'm that guy. I'm that guy. Not saying, again, it's all subjective. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, you know. And for some people out there, it's like, well, you need to get rid of that one bad thing, you know. Just like the, I hate to say this, but just like the fat person needs to put down the cheeseburgers and put down the cakes, um, it is what it is. You know, that's one of my weaknesses. That's something, um, uh, that substance use is something that I've always uh, dealt with. I try to control it. Um, a lot better and I am controlling it a lot better at this point in my life. I'm a much more even kill uh, sort of person at this point in my life. But hey, you know, that's where I am. So this is just, those are facts and that's what it is. So let's see what else we got. Um, this is the last and I'm going to finish up with this. Um, so we have one person say, and I'm not going to say anyone's name again. Um, if I'm rebuking or pushing back on some of these comments, it's only because my opinion is different. I'm not necessarily saying you're wrong. I'm only giving my opinion. Um, but, you know, I want to be objective, as objective as possible. This person uh, suggested, suggested push through for a few days. This is to Lula um, about coming off the Vicodin and going on Kratom. He said push, few, push through for a few days with nothing, then dose the Kratom. Then you got to take Benzo to get off the Kratom, the final bridge. All right. I, again, this is something, if you're not already taking some sort of benzodiazepine, I would not suggest that. And again, I'm not a doctor, but uh, it is very well documented. And I've never been through it because I've never gotten hooked on Benzos. That's, that's one of those, those things. Benzos, for me, is one of those things I've talked about. It's been a tourist approach for me. You know how I talked about certain drugs? I went and lived there, packed up all my shit and moved there. Then I've had other drugs that it's just like a tourist approach. Approach. I just went there for a few days, like I was going out of town, visited, messed around, then came back home. You know what I mean? I didn't move there permanently and, and fill out the change of address and all that. <laughs> um, benzos, that's benzos for me. I've tried some Xanax. I've tried some Clonopins. I've tried Ativans a few times in my life, um, but it's never been anything that I've taken consistently on a regular basis. However, it's well documented that the withdrawals from something like benzos is not good. And I've even heard from a lot of people that it's the worst, that it can be worse than even opiates or narcotics. That, for me, is hard to believe because narcotics are hell. Um, the withdrawals from narcotics are hell um, on earth, to be completely honest. But 
Um, if you're not only already on some sort of benzo, both times that I came off of uh, narcotics, I, I did not uh, use benzos to come off. Okay, so I don't think you know while that may work for some people, and if you're already on some sort of benzo, being prescribed that, talk to your doctor about it. Maybe that will kind of help you some uh, to kind of mitigate the withdrawals a little bit. I can see that happening, but if you're not already on some sort of benzo, I would not recommend taking benzos to come off of the narcotics because that's also a, a mind altering drug. And, and I've just heard those can be really bad as well. And you don't want to be, you know, like a monkey grabbing one branch, you know, while, you know, <laughs> don't let go of one branch before you grab onto another one. And I know, you know, we're, we're telling you how you can possibly take Kratom. I understand a Kratom is another substance and you would have to come off of Kratom, but we're using that more uh, like we would use Suboxone, you know, getting you off the harder stuff so that you can get on something that's more natural and that will be somewhat easier to come off of um, if, you know, if you have to end up taking it for kind of an extended period of time. So um, I, I wouldn't agree with the whole benzos thing. Uh, you know, it's up to each individual person. It has to do with your specific relationship. I get that. Um, but that is, that's just not something that I personally, um, would recommend to you. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. What, we got, what else we got? So I think that's about it guys. I think that's about it. Um, I really appreciate you listening. Once again, I've been getting a lot of love on the channel recently. I think people just feel a sense of, ah, when they come here, um, because you know, living life as a, an addict to substances is tough when you're around a bunch of sober people all the time. And there's a lot of people out there that addic are addicted to some substance, but they're constantly around sober people and they have no one that they can talk to about this and no one that can really understand what they're going through. And I think when people come to this channel, they're like, whoa, yes, people who get me, people who understand, people who can offer palpable advice that can actually be practiced and applied, you know, in, in my life, um, because these people know and have been through it and, uh, there's no judgment here. And I think that's one of the reasons people really like it. So if you enjoy this sort of content, it's inspiring to you. Um, leave a comment down below, 